take it away. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Talek and I'm gonna be running Alucard 90% in Symphony of the Night. Uh, we made a, a few small little improvements over the run, so I'm gonna be trying to showcase those a little bit. Uh, Mash, if you can send me over some cool questions up there in chat, because I'm not gonna be able to follow it uh, really well during the run. Uh, yeah, we're yeah, gonna I'll, start as Richter Beaumont, and I'm gonna... Sure thing. And I'm gonna just uh, continue explaining stuff on the way. So, uh, we're gonna go in 3, 2, 1, go. So as Rifter, we need to collect some parts between the room. And, uh... We need to also expel all of our hearts during the fight. And uh, those are conditions are in order to get certain items that we are gonna need to actually finish the run to do two of the important skips in the run. The death skip and the relic skip. So during the run you're gonna see me doing this backdash motion. Uh, that's the main movement deck for all the cards. Is, like I was gonna say human form. Have Vine Fire form, I guess. Uh, it's done by Pressing backdash and canceling it with the shield button and then doing backdash again. Uh, that's how that works. In general, the run, uh, we are very powerful as Alucard. We have uh, very strong gear. And since we're going to be skipping death, we're going to keep it. The run is very much focused on movement. More so than any type of fighting. So it's very important for me to jump well, do quick combat and return to uh, shoot as much quickly as possible. So this is the enemy that I'll skip. Let me do it first and then let's play it. I remember spending like six, three to six hours on this thing when I was first trying to learn it. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit daunting, but once you figure it out, it's not that bad. Yeah, we actually have a very extensive uh, base of guides and tutorials for this game. If you're interested, you can go over to speedo.com slash Sultan and learn all about it. So the death skip, what I did there was basically I leveled up at a certain place of the screen with a certain velocity which made me underflow once I enter the next screen. So I basically enter a death room and exit it immediately, which doesn't trigger the cutscene and lets me keep all my overpowered equipment. So we're gonna be doing basic platforming from here on out. Uh, we're doing the, this uh, concept called the clock rush. Uh, watch. A little bit later I'm gonna reach a room where there are two statues that open and close at uh, certain intervals. Uh, they're open at even minutes and close at odd minutes. Which means basically that the current speed with uh, the recent strategies the speed at which okay, that was a double kill on those bosses. We killed them on the same frame, uh, which means that we want to get in that room, which I'm going to show in a little bit, uh, before the eight-minute mark. And it doesn't really matter how much slower we get unless we get the sub seven, which has never happened yet. So we're in this phase of the game, basically preparing for the rest of the run. Because the clock rush, technically speaking, should be relatively easy to get. Uh, but other than that, during the clock rush, because we sort of have time to waste, we use that to prepare our experience so that we level up at specific times. Because, as you probably saw earlier, each whoops, I'm curious, huh? each level up animation in this game. Oh my God, this Freeman really knows how to play the game. Each level up animation takes about 2 seconds, so we want to minimize any level up animations after the clock rush, because as I said before, as long as we get here before, that was a room by the way, with Maria, with the touch, as long as we get there before the 8 minute mark, 
we are fine. So we sacrificed some time during the proper, potentially jeopardizing getting it, in order to make sure that we get as few level ups as possible after that. Another optimization that we are going to be doing is we are going to uh, keep in mind what our drops are, because we are going to be equipping some items later on, and uh, there is a certain configuration of the menu which helps us be a little bit quicker and easier menuing, and that is in case we do this version of the death skip we want an odd number of drops in our inventory. So far we have none, but that means that after Doppelganger we can just take the Gladius. I'm just gonna make that difference. Another way to take care of that RNG a little bit is by skipping some of the enemies, or rather killing them in a way which makes sure that we don't get their drop. But that uh, jeopardizes the top rush even further, so uh, I'm not gonna be doing it much now. Doppelganger who is fully susceptible to the stopwatch, so he dies very quickly. So yeah, I'm going to be taking this item here to fix our menu, as I said earlier. And we're going to be killing some enemies here in the outer wall. We didn't used to do that before, but oh, I got a banana. That means that we have a suboptimal moment, but that's fine. Unless we get another drop which will fix that. Let's add some of these heads, make sure we don't get... There we go. The blue ones don't stone us, but it's still not. So this is a kind of suboptimal thing, killing that guy. That makes sure that our experience is a good point after the top rush. So even though we waste some time killing him, it's actually not a pain waste. As long as we get to the room. Early enough. It looks like we're gonna be at a good place to get that. Oops. I was meant to bark at that. In a little bit. So, so right now I'm hoping for another drop to fix my menus. It may not happen, which is fine. In a little bit I'm going to be doing the uh, wolf ending of the top rush. A very fast- oh there we go, we got a tart, thank you. Perfect. So now our menus- oh I'm going to skip that, there we go. Our menus are fixed now. And now with the wolf, we can maneuver very quickly back to the top room. Got the table jump. Now we are waiting for the statue to open up so we can continue with the run. Uh, with the wolf transformation we get a downward dive kick when we untransform from it which uh, lets us do this uh, sequence break and continue straight to the Orox quarters we're not supposed to be here until very like way later on in the run but uh, this lets us go get the mist very early as well as a library card which basically get, gives us access to the bat relatively early which is the best form of movement for this category. We're doing some mining manipulation here to avoid those blade masters. They need two slashes to kill, so it loses time to, to fight them. Also, XP matters a lot from this point on, so fighting them definitely in that level. These guys for these and wait for a cutscene that we already skipped. Now we're going to the library. 
this is a little bit of a RNG point, unfortunately. But uh, it's really a good way we can negate most of that. Let's put the book jump. There we go. Got it. Again, using the untransformed dive kick to bounce off that book. You know, to gain the fairy, which is gonna give us infinite money via the use of a glitch. We're gonna underflow our garnets. Thank you for. I'm interested in. <laughs> I'm interested in this. So we basically saw one garnet when we had zero in our inventory, which only goes to 255. I'm interested in <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do a really cool strat that's relatively recently implemented into the run. Let's see if I get it. Well, I actually messed it up. That's unfortunate. Oh well. But basically, oh. I'm so not used to <laughs> not getting it that I forgot to do. Anyway, so we're, we can go all the way up to that room where I got hit with the wolf. Oh, I got a crit. This boss music is supposed to not play after the boss fight, but because we got a crit, it's gonna continue. This must be a little bit tricky to get through sometimes. Oops. Far. There we go. A floor clip is double frame perfect, sub pixel perfect, but we have a setup for it and a buffer method, which makes it much easier than. Way easier than you would uh, if you would to do it without uh, pausing at all at real time. It's ridiculous to do but using this method is uh, much better. And now with the use of Lucy to Wing Smash, which is this move that I'm doing with the back. We can traverse the castle very quickly. The input for this is a three-quarter circle input, and it, we can control it directionally up and down, and it's fully chainable. So this is probably the most fun aspect of uh, running an artifact and certain this particular move. It's very satisfying, rather difficult to Oh, I didn't get that, that's unfortunate. Now with the buff wall stars, these bosses are completely trivial. Which is why I said that the one is very focused on movement. Rather than combat in any way. This is the Richter skip. basically jump over a trigger which switches the room where Rifter is at from the state of uh, before to after saving him after killing Shaft which lets us circumvent that, that whole exchange Let's put a little 
in Smash Chain there. It's very difficult sometimes to get through that uh, those teams. The mana pool that we bought at the store lets us refill our mana, which is why we're actually able to traverse all these rooms with the wing smash. It actually takes 8 mana to do a single wing smash. There's also some RNG involved with that, because every level up we gain, we can gain one more or less mana. And by the time we're here, we can potentially be missing 14 mana, which is almost two full wing smashes. There we go, that's the relic skip. It's basically the same trick as the death skip earlier. stars in each hand to maximize our damage output for the final two bosses. That was an okay shot fight. Looking that a little bit higher up, but that's a pretty pretty average uh, time for him. Oh, we're on to Dracula. The essence, the essence of this fight in this category is basically just to dodge his pattern of his claws, which is pretty pretty simple. The closest claw your uh, the claw your closest to is the one he's gonna swing. <laughs> Time. Go back whence you came. Nice. Trouble the soul of my mother no, no that more. That was uh, the run. It's a pretty quick run, I don't know, but uh, how? How is uh, it that I, I hope you guys enjoyed so it. And as I said before, if you're interested in you the game at all, go on to that uh, spinal template Sultan. We have a community, a Discord, all that stuff, a lot of guides, so what if you want to get into it, it's actually a pretty man. easy game to get into. So yeah, I'm seeing that next on the schedule is Diablo 3, so that's going to be pretty hype. Uh, I'm surprised there is no D2, so if next year, if it doesn't actually... Next year, though. <laughs> what? If so next year, it's not yes, I'm going to try and get it in. And uh, he runs that because that's. Uh, if you cannot live with them, then at least do anyway, them no harm. Anyway, good luck to the rest of the runners. For theirs is uh, already a hard me. lot. Yeah, she I just dropped the link to her for the for the speedrun. She would love you for just, all uh, of eternity. You know, uh, Lisa, you know, on speedrun.com, definitely hit that up. Farewell, my son. So, all the resources, leaderboards, and all that stuff are there. You can easily find the Discord. So, highly recommend it. These guys have been pretty amazing. So. Anyways, thanks for that. Well, we got a co-op run of uh, Diablo 3 coming up next. So stay tuned for that. We will also be switching. Uh...